Hello, Klaus here, and in today's video we are visiting the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K yet again, because I have um, jumped on the bandwagon and I got the Veltrox adapter. And um, I wasn't sent this by Veltrox, by the way, I uh, bought this for my own money, and I want to compare it to my old cheap adapter, focal reducer, and see what is actually best. Uh, I can say that build-wise, this cheap one is just medley and, well, it isn't... The Weltox feels a little more solid, I think. So one of the things that I did notice is that uh, on the this cheap adapter, the uh, glass itself is actually further down than on the, um, the Veltrox one. Uh, so it, uh, it, ha it and that does actually have a little bit of effect on me, uh, or at least on some of my lenses, because I use these lenses all of the time and um, they won't fit the Viltrox because of the mount they are adapted from, because they have like these metal rings here, all of them. So for this test, I will not be using my trusted and beloved vintage lenses. I will be using the Sam Yang uh, Cine lenses. Uh, and I might also try some Canon stuff. I'm not sure about that. But um, anyway, let's uh, get to the test right now. Let's go shoot something. So here we have the Veltrux um, shot on a Sam Yang 14 millimeter. And the format we are shooting is B-RAW or BRAW 5.Q5. And here we have the cheap adapter. Again, same settings. Uh, and what you might notice is that the, the cheap adapter is a bit more soft than the Veltrox. Um, another thing to mention as well is that if you look here at the shot, again, with the Samyang 14 millimeter and on the Veltrox adapter, you will notice right away when we go to the cheap adapter here that the field of view is quite wider on the Veltrox. So that means you can get wider shots using the Veltrox than the cheap adapter here. And it isn't because that the cheap adapter is, it's, it is cheap, but the Veltrox is actually not a super expensive adapter either. It's um, pretty cheap as well. I think it's around $100 or something, pretty cheap. And also again, um, the, the image itself is just way sharper on the Royal Trucks uh, than on the cheap adapter, and that's a good thing, I think. So again, like I, I said before, the downside of the the Viltrux is that I can't use these special vintage lenses I use, but I'm, I'm sure I'll find a workaround about that, so. So here again, just to show you this with the the field of view again, or for the last time, this is the Viltrux. And here we go to the cheap adapter. And as you will see, the Viltrux is quite wider and it is sharper in the, in the glass itself. So that's something. So one thing I do have a problem with, with not with the Viltrux, but with the cheap is that as you see, I'm trying to do these wide shots with objects close and I couldn't get it to focus here. I am quite close on the adapter and here the cheap one, same shot, but I couldn't get it in focus. So it's impossible to focus with close distance. One thing which is working is that if you, on the Viltrux here, you can um, use the aperture and you can turn that up and down and that's great. Another thing to test out would be to test if the OS is working and as you see here it's on and here I do it off and it is working quite well and that is a nice addition as well. Okay, here we are back at the studio with another setup and some days later to um, do a conclusion or talk about it. Okay, so as you saw, I did a lot of shot with the Veltrux and the, with the cheap adapter here. And as you also saw for the test, I think I, I would prefer to use the Veltrux. Um, 
this was super great for uh, beginning uh, to adapt your uh, micro four third lenses into a, a camera, but I am going to not throw this out, but I'm going to retire this for an, as of right now. So I'm going to use the Veltrux. So again, as you also saw in the test, um, the the using the pocket cinema camera 4K, of course, the autofocus is not working on this firmware. For me, it is not a big deal because I use manual focus anyway. So for me, not a huge problem, but I, I'm able to control the aperture, which I am interested in on these the lenses I used. And I'm not using those kinds of lenses that often anyways. Okay, anyway, I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, share it with your friends if you think it will help them out. And if you want to be notified every time there's a new video, please hit that bell icon down in the corner. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning, and keep sharing.